I'm not or actually I need to scooch so you have a bigger window. Okay, that looks. Play the music. Good. White Wait, girl. Do we need the music it's, first? Yeah. I got. It. Gonna be sunny today here in Fargo, North Dakota. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome back to summer. I mean, maybe fall. <laughs> kind of fall. We skipped fall. We did. All right. Thank you for tuning in to Diamond Realty Associates podcast real estate update. Did, did you know? We're Diamond Realty Associates, and I'm Trace. You are. I'm Don. <laughs> I'm Erin. I'm Amber. Amber is hesitating. Up, up. All right. Hi guys. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for coming today, joining me while we talk and about, me. and Aaron. And Don. And Amber. <laughs> while we talk about episode 25, prepping for fall, prepping our houses for fall. Yeah. That is. <laughs> Not our psyche. And then we're going to go over Tasty Tuesday. <laughs> Maybe we should talk about both the psyche and the house. I don't know if I'm prepped for fall because I think we went straight, straight from summer to winter. Um, we are somewhat prepped for fall. As because winter is coming. <gasps> winter is coming. I'm just going to avoid winter. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I think I'm going to avoid it this year. I I'm just going to be here. Okay. With my mother's. Butterscotch. My mother's. Your mother's. Trace, what are we going to talk about for prepping for fall? Um, well, we're just going to talk about some exterior and interior options. Last week we talked about for sale by owners and how MLS and Zillow work. We're going to talk about fall today. And then next week, what are we going to talk about? Whatever you want, boo. Our mini series of maintenance. Oh, on maintenance, your home. home maintenance. So this prepping for, for fall will tie in a little bit to home maintenance. True. I want to like. Oh, oh, oh that would be fun yeah. if you could do that. Touch TV. Touch yeah, if you're screen, wondering what we're looking at above, it's a big old TV that has all our info on it. So <laughs> kind of like a giant smart. cue card. So <laughs> three minutes before our podcast is supposed to start, I grabbed some tips and tricks. So I'm <laughs> counting on you guys to have better ideas too. <laughs> to fill in the gaps. To fill in the gaps. The oh. first tip it says for our exterior is to fix cracks in concrete and asphalt. Depending on where you live, these may be the last weeks in the year when it'll be warm and sunny enough to repair those things before winter hits. So are you talking like un like if you have a space under a sidewalk that's kind of... Like to sand jack or... Yeah, foam yeah, jack. I would. I might have to do that. Mud jack, concrete jack. All the jack. All the jack. Silicone, wasn't that Silicone one? jack, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I did Lots talk of ways to, to jack. I talked to my neighbor who um, is all wise so I usually go to him for home tips and I was going to seal my driveway but he said don't do that because it makes it really slick and as long as you don't use salt use sand then you won't get those little pock marks from the, the rocks coming up oh. and remember not to use salt for the first two, two years, years right because it's still of a new, curing of new concrete because you will cause those and you'll see that I have some twin home rentals on my block and it looks really bad it looks like someone threw gravel on there on their sidewalk. Because As, they use salt in those first two years? Yeah. Probably. And the other thing too is that sand is better for your pups. Oh. oh because yeah. salt actually can um, burn their paws. Oh. So as a dog owner and lover, um, yeah, sand is the way to go. Um, yeah. And it's super cheap. Super cheap. And if your kid has a sandbox, you can just use that. <laughs> and mine does. <laughs> Anyone need sand? Just scoop that up. I don't because I brought five <laughs> gallons of sand back from North Carolina. Well, don't use that on your sidewalk. Like from the beach? Yeah. <laughs> That's special sand. Like she it's got it before special. the hurricane. It's a it's special sand. I know. If anybody needs mm -hmm. sand, you know, what I do with it is in the middle of the winter when I'm feeling like it should be at the beach, I just put my feet in. You just do a sand. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> yeah. That's neat. And the sound of waves in the background. And in a few months, we will be showing a picture of Dawn sitting in her basement <laughs> with sand, sand yep. on her feet. In my beach chair. In her beach chair. <laughs> oh. All right. What else can we do? Uh, clean, <laughs> out, clean out your gutters. Okay. Oh, and put yeah. your down Not down. enough people clean out their gutters. Oh. Down oh. And when you see foundation problems caused by gutters not being put on appropriately or cleaned out, yep. that's all you can see. That's all I can see now. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. The nice thing, too, is that you have to get your gutters cleaned out around here because in the winter that causes ice jams, which can also make like slippery spots on your sidewalk around your house, and it also can deteriorate your fascia. 
Which will cause leaks behind I had the one seller, not my seller, we were buying the house. We asked them to put the gutters back up and they said that they took them down because they didn't like like all the plants like growing in there. So they just didn't ever clean it out and that was like inconvenient. Here's your sign. So we're like, can you please put those back up? We need those. We'll clean them out. And clean the gutters. And clean the gutters. And if you hate it, outsource it. There's teenagers. Like, mm -hmm. you can find somebody to do mm -hmm. that for somebody you. It's not hard. It. Mm -mm. But it is really important, like Trey said, for your foundation. Yeah, and, and you don't that think foundation you gotta keep. And especially if you live in an area of very mature trees that are completely losing all their leaves. Mature. Mature. Mm -hmm. Like the newer areas of town, you really don't need to clean your gutters. Like mine. My trees are like six feet tall. Mine are bigger, but my gutters are empty. Are you sure to clean your gutters? No. Um, one that we are a little ahead of the curve, and my husband and I have done, <clears throat> my husband did, mm -hmm. is um, we turned off all our faucets and unhooked our hoses, and they have these nifty little, they're like $4 at Menards, and a styrofoam thing, and just stick it over your faucet so that doesn't freeze and break, and then you have troubles in the spring. Oh, that's nice. nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you have sprinkler systems, you should probably have a professional come out and blow those out. Like today. Like should have been or tomorrow, tomorrow, two weeks ago. Okay, but yeah. it got real cold real fast, okay? Did. But now we have okay. some warm weather. Forgiven. Forgiven. Get right, you get a there. second chance. But it and is then, a good idea. It is a good idea. The other thing about turning off outdoor plumbing is also your sump, your sump pump hose, your discharge hose. You know, in, in West Fargo, you can pay $50 a year to discharge your sump pump drainage into your actual drain inside um, inside versus making an ice rink in your backyard. And the, and the reason they charge you is because they want to know who's doing it because the sewer can get overloaded if we get like rain in the spring and everyone's discharging yep. into their sewer. Yep. So it is good to tell the city of Fargo so there's no problems for everyone else. Does Moorhead have to tell or charge? I'm not sure. To be determined. We'll find out. We will Google that. We will Google that. Um, what is Google that? Um, a sump pump also, if you keep your soft hose it can get frozen yes. um, so it's good to put a PVC pipe if you're not going to discharge it into your sewer line um, put a PVC pipe going out far enough so that if there is a thaw in like February that you're not eroding your foundation mm. and speaking of sump pumps you should check them because obviously they stop working and they um, cause some oh water yeah Don what happened basement. yeah Don how does that work what, what happened well there? what happened is in the check valve of ours we got rocks in it because obviously it drains everything into your sump pump basin and the rocks got stuck in the check valve and the basin got full and then I got seepage around the entire basement and water underneath my oh. crawl space and I only lost a deep fryer and two pillows. So Very fortunate. Sounds Good. disgusting. Not it is. Well, and discharge. <laughs> What's going on today? We've got seepage, discharge. We want to avoid those things. Absolutely. All bad things. So next year, in the spring, I will be working on um, grading my landscaping away from my house a little better um, because I've got some negative grading going on. Mm -hmm. And that makes your sump pump work in overtime. And that's why I'm getting seepage. And Don, can you explain grading a little bit better? No. <laughs> you bring <laughs> in, <laughs> you're going to bring in a bunch of dirt I all am. the way around your house to get the water going away from that. Right. Because right. right now it's kind of draining down towards it. it. It's settled. Obviously, we've lived there for 12 years and it's settling the wrong way right now. And we were gonna do it this year, but then we got two puppies and figured we didn't want the mess, but they're digging anyway, so who cares? <laughs> we could have done it and be done with it, but whatever, but next it, year. It is one of the many maintenance list. things you do need to keep up on your house. Even if Absolutely. you're gonna live there for 20 years, you don't want the sump pump going awry because her sump pump probably was working a little bit harder yep. because of that negative grade. Um, Absolutely. And what do we say? What's the approximate lifespan of a sump pump? Five years and ours was in our house for 12. Yeah. Yes. So watch it after that five year mark or get a battery backup. We have a battery mm -hmm. backup that it will ring really, really loud if our sump pump's not working. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. So, because good things on sump pumps. We have a fully finished basement. At least yours was partially finished. Yep, that's the good thing about ours. Otherwise, I would have never noticed it. So, oh, sidebar wow. my husband did a really mean April Fool's prank on me because I'm a real estate agent and I know how much <laughs> it sucks if your basement floods. And he woke me up at 8 o'clock in the morning and said, oh, there's water in our basement. I jumped out of the bed. And then he said, April Fool's. Oh. So if anyone needs a good April Fool's joke. I'm and so then you decked him, yeah, him in the face. Nice. <laughs> so interior, what do we need to do oh, to wait, prep for? Did we forget We've got two more. Well, Composting. Two more. Well, do people compost around here? Some do. Okay. Some do, but do you know that I read somewhere that it's um, good for your yard to actually, instead of, 
sucking up all the leaves to like actually chop them up and spit them back out into the yard because it actually oh. serves as fertilizer. And same oh. with your last cut of your mow mowing. Cause you shouldn't bag it. Yep. Yeah, you shouldn't bag it. You should leave it on because that's food for your for your grass in the winter. And, and my grass is food for the bulls in the winter. And well, then the it's insulation. You shouldn't have bulls with your puppy peeing outside. Well, that should help. he's peeing in the spot where we had bulls, so we'll let you know in the spot. <laughs> that's what I hear. Um, clean outdoor furniture and gardening tools. If you might want to probably put them away already around here because they probably blew away if they yeah. weren't put away yet. Um, speaking of, I was driving down 32nd. Um, where was I? I think I was headed towards Horn Hornbacher's and Osgood, yep. and this like kiddie pool, like this <laughs> oh, kiddie oh, pool no. just comes like, like rolling. Twister style. Yeah. Oh, I wish that you, you can't like capture that because it just happens so fast. Just I'm like trying. rolls yeah. across the road, and I was like, oh, cow. Somebody just lost that. Another cow. <laughs> Secure your kitty and dog pools. Mm -hmm. I'm the worst at leaving my patio furniture up all year. I do Fine. too, but we don't have cushions. But I you're do. blocked though. I do. Have you're kind of blocked by the wind. They bit. just get lighter every, every year. <laughs> nice. uh, maybe a little grosser. Okay, inside. Inside. What well, can you, I do inside? You can burn your furnace for winter duty. Yeah, get that checked because it's hard to get it checked when it's already gone out. Duty. <laughs> How often should you be changing your filters? Every six months. Uh, if it's a month? one, if it's a one-inch one every month. Yep. Mm. And um, if it's what are the if it's a five-inch one? Five months. <laughs> oh. Yep. So Ooh, basically, month. One mm -hmm. inch per month. Who um, who has that in their calendar? I see it pop up in the calendar to change their filter. <laughs> it's more like Tim, go change the filter. Oh, I see it every now and then. Yeah. Change furnace filter. And I, there's something else in there too that I always forget to do. Oh, I have de-winterize, or not de-winterize. Winterize. We winterize my lawn this week. Oh, Tim, the winterize other, my lawn this the week. The other thing too is that when you... <laughs> he listens to the podcast. So that's pretty much a to-do list for him. Is he like on the calendar invite? Because that no. would be great. We just should like him. add him to it. You oh, don't even have to tell him. It just knows. tells him. It's just a hint. It's brown. Um, it one thing we like to do on our furnace filters is write the date we put them in because mm. ours are six months. Genius. So we write the date. <laughs> so then when I look at it and see February of 2017, I can be like, oops. I forgot the <laughs> <laughs> or when you look at the sticker, you're like, this hasn't been serviced since 2016. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm playing with fire. No, I'm pretty... I'm pretty adamantly on the list. Mike's always like, did we get our air conditioning? For, you know, I'm, I signed up for one hour heating and they come. They come automatically, right? Yeah. And they just schedule it with you? Yep. How often should they be coming? Once a year for once your furnace? Once for the air and once for the furnace. And they'll do and the air they, in the spring and the furnace in the fall. Unless you can get them on the same day and it's nice enough to run both. Because <laughs> I don't. Because sometimes I do that because I forget. Oops. <laughs> 2017. But, well, that's still better. Some people go like forever without servicing it. Exactly. So Never even checking. Yeah. A lot of houses we have an inspector for do that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> We're all gonna get ready to start up our fireplaces. I wish I had. Yeah. One. Yeah. Clean out our chimneys. Yep. And honestly, um, one of the houses that my my people are moving into next in two weeks, I should say, has an electric fireplace and it has a wood burning fireplace yes. and they actually had a chimney sweep out to inspect everything and it was only 80 bucks oh it oh. is very smart i had a client that they didn't do that and the half of their house lit on fire so, so. you got to make sure that chimney's nice and sealed and it, it could erode over yep. a year mm -hmm. and to make sure your rain cap at the top is in good condition too because mm -hmm. that can cause rodents in your chimney and those will also start on fire yes and, I don't know, <laughs> and like the smell of Bird, bird squirrel or it bird smells like birds. chickens. Yeah, chickens. But it's gonna get cold. We're gonna need fire fire this for um, We're gonna need some wood. Um, one of my clients, they have a rural property. They want to put an outdoor fireplace Ooh. and hook it in mm -hmm. put it inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said it's gonna be super complicated and kind of expensive to start, but he's but really excited so about fetch. it. So fetch. It's gonna um, be so warm. But so they're gonna start like a like a furnace on the outside. But for wood burning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My cool. brother-in-law has mm -hmm. that. They oh, have really? a big one, and then that's how they heat their house. Well, he has, like, a wood well, cutting business, like, a tree cutting business, wood cutting. So, now he has all this wood. <laughs> He's like, I need to do something with it. So, oh, that's yeah. smart. That is smart, because, obviously, you have to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Why not heat your house? Mm -hmm. And it's definitely good for the environment. Mm -hmm. Another thing you can do is uh, make sure your windows are doing... I know my big window in my living room isn't the best so I'm actually yeah. gonna buy some of that wrapping this winter mm. and save on some energy that you costs. like blow dry on 
Do, uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've never done a seal set. We have it in there. Reminds me of growing up. Yeah. <laughs> Hair dryer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like straight back to the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> True. So, um, what? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You go. What is? Oh. <laughs> okay. No. You go. For real. Okay. Real. <laughs> I was just going to talk about the nifty little thing Trace has up there that check weather stripping by opening a door, placing a piece of paper in the entryway, and closing the door. If the paper slides back and forth easily, then your stripping isn't doing its job. Mm -hmm. Or if your doorknob freezes, mine does yeah. that. Okay. And I was just going to... Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, like, the old dad joke, or it's not really a joke, but, like, the parental thing. Stop hitting the outside! <laughs> You're <laughs> throwing money out! You're Reborn letting money the out the window! <laughs> You're throwing money out the door! Yeah. yeah. Well, and the thing, too, is that you don't think about is the weather stripping around your garage doors, too, because um, you're using your garage doors every day, and there's a lot of pressure that goes into that seal around the bottom of that, and if you don't fix that in the winter, you can have some snow in your garage, which is not fun, too. Or if you have living space above your garage like I do, then that's yeah. affecting your heating costs as well. Absolutely. Didn't the doors and windows guy tell us that it's pretty inexpensive to replace that stripping around there? Yes. And that People Absolutely. just don't do it. The garage door? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, well, any door. Yeah. Yeah. To replace that, it, that, that gets worn. Yeah. People forget about it. So people do forget about it. So fix yeah. your stripping. Fix your stripping. I could see the garage door one wearing down faster, too, because Absolutely. it's so much more exposed mm -hmm. to the element. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I don't see on here, and I don't know if it's a fall thing, but flushing out your water heater. That's mm -hmm. a yearly mm -hmm. to do. Um, we'll talk about that more next week on maintenance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Run right that down. <laughs> well, right. another thing that, like, you'll have people do too it's preparing for fall but when the time changes to switch the batteries in your fired alarms and carbon monoxide things fired alarms. your smoke fire your smoke to alarms. prevent the fire yes the smoke alarms yes that's what i meant fired alarms fired alarms the fired they're alarms fired. they're fired anyway if you change them when the time changes you'll have a new fresh battery oh, every yeah. six months oh yeah a good reminder yep. nice that is from your local fire department not me and then our windows get kind of depressing, <laughs> so keep your windows clean and blinds open so you don't yeah. be in a funk in our nine-month winter. Um, weren't you the one telling me that there was a study saying it's the back of your knees? Yes! <laughs> I need to see read, the sun. <laughs> I read a study, because I'm a nerd, and they did a, they did a study to see if they could change your circadian rhythm. You, know, you naturally go to bed at a certain time, and uh, they said they, they were trying it on pieces of your skin, and the back of your leg, if you shine a bright light, um, it can it can adjust your circadian rhythm by up to three hours. Wow! So when so are we getting shorts, light for layout. this office? I, we have talked I'm about thinking it. tanning the TV. bed. <laughs> Where's the tanning bed going? <laughs> I know. Let's get one of those. Uh, Double doses of vitamin D for the diamonds. Yeah. So if you feel like you're wanting, <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. If you feel like you're wanting to. <laughs> If you feel like you're wanting to go to bed at 3 p.m., put some bright light on the back of your knees. Like I'm going to get back to the appropriate conversation. Yeah, flash. <laughs> Amber just snorted here. It's fine. You can't drink all day if you don't start before noon. It's totally fine. It's 11.45. So, anyway. Right. So, noon, like an those hour. Are fight, those, tips. fight those winter blues. Start now. Start now. Or just drink with us. <laughs> all right. Those are your tips for fall. Anything else we missed? Plan your winter vacation now. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can avoid all of this. Good airline ticket costs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Travel. Travel. Wash your coat. You should wash your coat in the spring yeah. so it's all nice and fresh. Oh, and stick a 20 in it in the spring. <laughs> Seriously, it makes you so happy when you Surprise. find it in the fall. <laughs> oh, that's fun. It's little things. That's it. So, who was our Tasty Tuesday winner? Where were we actually first? We were at a oh, Tony's. Tony's. Eating all the pasta. All so, the carbs. Crazy Jamie Pinsky. Whoop whoop. Gary, Minnesota. <laughs> Foodie and training. Foodie and training. You oh, won. I almost got her last name right. Yeah. What were you going to say? No, I mean spelling it. I put a oh. Y in there. but Well, she'd be happy that you did. Just close. I, I was real close. So come pick that up if you are listening to us. Hopefully you are. Berkshire Hathaway, 1815 38th Street South, Fargo. We're text on. <laughs> Or, or text, text on. on. Or message me. I can message you. Everyone come get your gift cards. I feel like there's still a ton. Just We're, we're just going to start re-giving them out to other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give them up. Um, we have Buyers and Brews coming up the 29th. What is Buyers and Brews? I mean, it is a booze. Booze. Buyers and Booze. 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 Boo
Buyers and Booze is our educational class for home buyers or sellers, first time or not. It's free. There's free food. There's free booze. There's free candy. There's free child care. Costume um, contest this time. Yeah. yeah. Wear, wear your costumes. costume. Have your kids wear their costumes? Um, I think that there should be an alternative because not all of us are costume, like, Funny happy. t t-shirt? Um, but like, what if they brought us a really good joke too? Like, oh, instead, like a Halloween joke? yeah, a Halloween joke. If they don't want to wear a costume, then they can sure. be entered to win. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, I like it. Decided. Decided. Boom. Bring a joke. If you bring don't a bring joke, a if you don't bring a costume. And for food this time, we're gonna do a soup bar because it's getting cold and soup sounds good when you're mm-hmm. cold. With some French bread. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, is that it? I think that's that it. might be it. That's it. Well, and just to recap on us, we're a client focused team. We give one-on-one service, so if you meet Amber, you're not going to get shuffled off to me for showings and then shuffled off to Don for the closing. We are there to hold your hand from start to finish. Forever. 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 marry you for like the rest of your life. No, like, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, gotta love us. Just love us. <laughs> okay, you love. can find us at buysellfmhomes.com or our Diamond page, Diamond Realty Associates on Facebook. And as always, stay stay classy, FM. I forgot the music. I won't do Clyde. I think that was really good for throwing it together in three minutes. Mm -hmm. Good job, Trace. Also, that's something we all know about. (laughs) Yeah. Oh.